I totally got wasted. Let's take a look at that. Whether you're live streaming a sporting event or showing off your gaming skills, we can all agree that instant replay is an essential part of those experiences. That's why on this episode, I'll show you how I added instant replay to my A10 Mini Pro live stream. So let's get into it. Playing back a highlight during a live broadcast has become ubiquitous during sports broadcasts. Unfortunately, the A10 Mini Pro does not offer this essential feature, forcing many A10 owners to decide whether or not they should add expensive hardware solutions like the Roland P20 HD or abandon the ATEM altogether and opt for a software-based streaming solution. Thankfully, with a little time and ingenuity, you can add basic replay to your live stream. Now, in order to pull this off, you will need an ATEM Mini Pro, a computer with a secondary display, a USB to USB-C cable, an Elgato Stream Deck, and a free copy of both Companion and OBS. And for reference, I've included a diagram of my setup that you can reference while playing along at home. Step one, we will need to connect the A10 Mini Pro to our computer via the USB-C connection on the back, allowing us to view and capture your video feed in OBS. And don't worry, we are still going to stream using the ATEM's hardware encoder. Step two, with the ATEM connected to our computer via USB-C, we now need to launch OBS and create a scene by clicking the plus sign and calling it ATEM Mini Pro. Next, we need to create a source by hitting the plus sign and selecting video capture device. Give it a name and hit OK. When the dialog box pops up, select Blackmagic Design from the device dropdown and under preset, select 1920 by 1080. For those unhappy with the contrast levels of the A10 mini webcam output, you can uncheck use preset and set everything manually from resolution to FPS, color space and video range, which should be set to full. And yes, that was a bonus tip. With the video capture device all hooked up, we can now set up our audio capture. And to do that, we will once again hit the plus under sources and select audio input capture. Give it a name and from the device dropdown, select Blackmagic Design. Step three, once we have our ATEM video and audio feed set up in OBS, we'll want to open the preferences pane and head on over to output and select the replay buffer tab. In here, you want to turn on the replay buffer. By default, it is set up for 10 seconds. You can obviously change it to whatever duration you want. But for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it at the default setting. Next, we are going to select the recording tab and set up a directory for our recording. And for me, I'm going to create a new directory on the desktop called Instant Replay Recordings. Under recording format, please select MP4, set your encoder to X264. For rate control, select CBR and for bitrate, set it to 20,000. Keep in mind, I'm on an iMac, so feel free to play around since this will depend on your specific computer hardware. Next, we will select audio, scroll down to advanced and ensure monitoring device is set to BMD HDMI. From here, we select video from the sidebar and ensure base canvas resolution and output scale resolution are both set to 1920 by 1080. As for FPS, it should be set to the same value as your ATEM live stream setting. And last but not least, we will select advanced and make sure under recording, the replay buffer file name prefix reads replay. Step four, we will want to close the preferences window, then start our replay buffer. Wait about 15 seconds and click the arrow button next to replay buffer. This will create a file of our first replay. Step five. Now that we have a recording, we want to create a new scene by clicking the plus button. A window should pop up, name it record. Next, we want to add a source by clicking the plus symbol and selecting media source. When that window pops up, give it the name instant replay. Click OK and then select browse and locate that recorded file we just made in the instant replay recordings directory on our desktop. Once that's done, we are going to select tools from the top menu and select scripts. A window will pop up. Click the plus sign and select the instant replay script. Now, before closing the window, select instant replay from the media source dropdown. Next, we want to ensure sound will play when we trigger this video. So click the cog, select advanced, audio properties, 
and from the audio monitoring dropdown, select monitor and output. With all of that out of the way, the only thing left to do is set up a shortcut key by jumping back into the settings and hotkeys. Once selected, scroll down till you find instant replay and create a shortcut key. I am using shift K. Now we can select the A10 mini pro scene. Start the replay buffer, give it a full minute, then hit your shortcut key to activate the instant replay. You should see a notification in the lower left corner of OBS that reads replay buffer save. And now when you switch to record from the scenes list, you will see your 10 second instant replay. Having finally unlocked the ability to record instant replay in OBS, the next thing to do is integrate it into our live stream. And in order to do that, we will need to right click and select Windows Projector Preview. When that window opens up, right click on that screen and select full screen BMD HDMI. This will allow us to play our instant replays on input four. Now, at this point, you can play instant replays during your live stream by manually selecting scenes from OBS. But let's be honest, that's a little clunky. So let me help you make it a little bit more turnkey with the help of macros. Let's start by creating two macros in the ATEM software control panel. To do this, we will open the macro window, find an empty slot, give it a name, then select input four from the preview section and hit auto from the transition style section. Then stop recording the macro. We will do this one more time but select input two from the preview section before hitting auto from the transition style section. And of course, stop recording. With both of our macros saved, we can head on over to companion. Never set up a used companion? Well, don't worry. I've got a video that will make you an expert in no time flat. And I think you can find it right above my head. Now that we have companion loaded, we can assign our two A10 macros a spot in the button layout tab. To do that, Select the Buttons Layout tab and the Presets tab. Once selected, tap Black Magic Design, then Macros, and find the two macros we just created. Drag each on over to a spot in the Buttons tab, and note the number in the corner of each button. This is super important. With that taken care of, we can now head on over to the Stream Deck and create two macro buttons. The first will be a simple hotkey macro that you create by selecting hotkey from the system drawer and in the hotkey dialog box, enter shift K or whatever shortcut key you used in OBS to trigger an instant replay recording. A few things to remember when using this macro or even the keyboard shortcut. OBS has to one, be open, two, be the active application, and three, the ATEM Mini Pro scene is selected. Missing any of those three steps will not allow you to trigger an instant replay. Our next macro will be a little bit more complex since it will trigger the first transition macro, play the instant replay, hold for a few seconds before triggering the second transition, hold again for a few seconds before ultimately loading the A10 Mini Pro scene back into OBS, essentially allowing us the ability to trigger another instant replay recording. And just like that, you now have a fully functioning instant replay that can be triggered from your Stream Deck. Now, of course, this is a simple implementation of instant replay, and that was intentional since it's a pretty complicated setup, but by investing a little bit more time, you can achieve results just like this. Let's just park ourselves right here and take a look at that. Ooh, that How dope is that? It's amazing. Obviously this method, while really cool, does have one major drawback. You will no longer be able to record your full live stream via the USB port since it's now being used as a webcam. That said, if you were to use a software-based alternative, you would still have to connect your ATEM via the USB-C. So in my opinion, this option, while cumbersome, 
allows you to still reap the benefits of the ATEM hardware-based encoder. And with that, we are at the end of another episode. Have any questions, comments, or just want to lavish me with praise? Don't hesitate to let me know all about it in the comment section below. And as usual, hit the like, subscribe, and bell button so you can be notified when I drop another episode. Catch you guys next time.